Hello. So I'm from DFI Robotics, and I hope today I can um, convince you that there's a way to replace a large amount of herbicides by the use of machine learning. So you know this is a big concern for farmers. Um, there's a lot of pressure to reduce the use of herbicides. There uh, is a real renaissance in mechanical weed control. A lot of sprayer companies are buying uh, equipment producers that make hoeing machines. A lot of uh, farmers are going organic. The issue is, if you want to stop using herbicides on your field, uh, you basically have two options. One option is, what do you do with the plants between the rows? So you get rid of them with a hoeing machine. And then on the row, you usually need manual labor. So people uh, in Germany, for example, it's a lot of people from Eastern Europe that come on the fields and get rid of the plants manually by hand. Okay. So I don't think that this is a solution. I'll try to explain to you why I think we need uh, machine learning for this. So the issue is not that we're missing uh, tools to remove the plants. The issue is really how do we replace the selectivity of the chemical? So today we're spraying chemicals on the fields that are selective and that kill all plants except for the plants of the crop type. What we're doing is we're using neural nets, so uh, machine learning, deep neural nets, to recognize the plants. And then you can use different types of selective tools to remove the, the weeds. So basically the, the problem that we need to solve is what you see on the, on the left side is a, uh, an image of plants, and you see there's a larger plant here, which is the sugar beet, and you have some smaller plants, which are the weeds, and you basically get, need to get rid of the weeds. So if you sprayed some selective chemicals on it, they would kill the weeds, but spare the, the crop plants, the sugar beet. In um, computer vision methods, traditional thing was either I say, okay, green on brown, everything that's green is a weed, so I can save some chemicals by only spraying on the weeds, then more advanced technologies say, okay, I'm gonna look at the size of the plant. The big plant is the crop plant, and the small plants are the weeds. This works well, but only for transplanted crops. So for lettuce, it works well, but it stops working as soon as plants overlap, and it doesn't work for sown crops. And then there's a method called so feature engineering. So you're going to engineer some computer vision features. So you will say, okay, uh, what's the curvature of the leaf or texture and features like this, but this is not very robust. So it doesn't work on all types of plants because plants don't look the same in the morning, in the evening, and so on. So it's a difficult problem. And the deep neural nets, which are really great for this kind of task, they learn their features themselves. So with a lot of data, they can know which features to look at in order to recognize which plant we're dealing with here. So this is what we're doing. And in order to be very good at this, you need a lot of data of plants. You need data at night, in the morning, in the evening, uh, different plants and different growth types, and we have the biggest plant image database in the whole world. That's 12 million images that are annotated. They were acquired over the last five years, and that's really essential to have a system that is able to recognize the plants accurately. So what we're selling at the moment is an evaluation kit. So it's basically a box which has a camera, which has a lighting system, it has a processing unit, and it runs those neural nets. In all those boxes, we can write plugins. So our customers are developing plugins that use those classification uh, results uh, for their tool. So this can be a mechanical tool that goes in and out of the row to remove the weeds, or it can be a spot sprayer that is only going to spray the chemicals on the weeds. So it's simple to integrate. We actually have a, a booth here, so if that's something that would be interesting for uh, some people here feel free to talk to us and um, we can talk if that's something that you could integrate, maybe even use next year uh, on your machine. Um, there's Tobias, my colleague, he's at the booth and he can give you more information about, um, about all those things. What we also have is, um, so I don't know if you know our group, but we're like emerged from this group that did the bunny rob, which was like a, a platform robot, and we did some uh, phenotyping services with robots. We also have a weeding robot that basically demonstrates that you can use those machine learning techniques on the robotic system. So what you have here is a, a robot that uses the camera that I've just shown before. It drives autonomously over the field. It uses the neural nets to recognize the plants, and then a mechanical tool that chops off the weeds at the roots. 
So with this, we're able to demonstrate basically that you can use this, and then we're working with our uh, partners and customers. Um, we're um, supporting the integration of the system, so showing them how we can use this system with the neural nets on their machines, so that uh, we will have systems that can use those neural nets and do uh, mechanical weeding in the row, so without needing herbicides and without needing manual labor to remove those weeds. So in terms of the uh, team, so we've been backed by Bosch uh, in the past. We have a strategic investor in agriculture who will be uh, joining our venture, so we will not only be backed by Bosch in the future. Uh, we have a great team of eight people, so that's a lot of experts in robotics and agricultural robotics and deep learning and so on. Uh, so for me, it was very interesting, especially to talk to people who uh, believe that they have machines that uh, could use the system in the future to make some serious products based on those neural nets. And also, uh, if there are people that are looking for jobs, if you know some uh, students looking for internships and so on, this would be also very interesting for us, uh, for people to join the team. This is it, and we have a lot of time for questions, which is great. Thank you. Good morning. Um, you said 12 million annotated pictures. Are these pictures just pictures of, of sugar beets or what type of various crops do you have in your data set? Yeah, so at this stage, so sugar beet is something that we always focused on because it's a sown crop that's very hard to distinguish from, from weeds. But we have corn, we have soybeans, we have rapeseed, we have lettuce and also sugar beets. So some of the main crops grown in Europe and we have, I think, 50, uh, more than 50 uh, specific weeds in our database as well. I have a question about a robot actually, which originated from the bony rope, like you said. A bony rope has been around on the Amazon stand for like maybe five editions of Agitechnica, or maybe more. Um, in your opinion, why does it take so long, or why did it take so long before it yeah, it really gets to the field and to farmers. So, I, I mean, I think the topic with, so we all know that there are a lot of benefits of using robots in agriculture, right? Soil compaction, you don't need a driver. I mean, there's a lot of really, a lot of things, but um, it's, it's hard to convince the farmers to actually buy those robots, especially those platforms that don't really do anything else than the tractor, right? Um, and most of the robots that we see here also, they, they don't really solve an additional problem on top of basically providing autonomy. And, uh, and we looked at this and we saw, okay, the, the real problem that farmers have is, for example, it's manual labor in, in mechanical weeding. And if you get rid of this, basically use a robot for this manual labor, then we could move from chemicals to manual, uh, mechanical weeding uh, much uh, more easily. So this is actually really focusing on, on one specific problem that farmers have, which I think is the first problem where we need robotics for. And uh, this is why we really focus on this.